Okay, it's 11 a.m. sharp here in Taiwan in the morning. And I know it's evening in a different part of the world. So good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone who participated online today. So welcome to today, today, today's dialogue entitled, uh, titled Vision, Innovative Governance and Sustainability, a 21st Century Higher Education Paradigm. And we're very happy to have uh, Professor Jeffrey J. P. Tai. He's also the president of Asia University to be the speaker for today. And it's also a great um, privilege to have invited Professor uh, Feng Daxuan to be the moderator today. He is um, a member of Asia University International Advisory Board. He's also a former vice president for research at the University of Texas at Dallas and a fellow of the American Physical Society. So without um, further ado, I'm going to turn the floor to Professor Fong to moderate today's session. Uh, thank you very much, um, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are. Uh, we are in the new normal now. Whenever we organize a forum of the 21st century nowadays, we bring in um, an audience from every corner of the world, which is a new paradigm uh, and a new normal. Uh, we're very, very happy today to have the opportunity to have a dialogue with Jeffrey, uh, Jeffrey Tai who is the founding and current president of Asia University in Taiwan. Um, about seven years ago, my friend, uh, Dr. So in Korea, who was one of the architects of the Korean technology um, paradigm, told me that um, one of the ways to look at Korean universities sophistication and maturation is to notice that private universities in Korea are as competitive and sometimes more than competitive than the public universities. Uh, for the seven years I spent in Taiwan, I did not notice that, but recently, I think we all would agree that Asia University, along with its sister component, the Chinese, uh, China's uh, Medical University in Taichung, uh, are changing that paradigm in Taiwan. And the other thing why it is so exciting for today's, uh, uh, for today's paradigm, uh, for today's discussion, is that I returned from Asia about four years ago. And to my great surprise, that the, uh, the Western world, especially the United States and Canada and so on, did not recognize or did not realize that Asian higher education, and not just Asia University, but Asian higher education all across Asia is rising very, very fast, which obviously tells you that the Asia transformation into the 21st century is uh, manifested by this rise. So I have been very anxious to promote in the Western world this particular idea that they should understand the rise of Asian universities. And today we are going to see one of such university showing the great rise of Asian universities in general. So without ado, let me uh, invite Professor Tsai to give a short comment before we enter into our dialogue. Jeffrey, please. Okay. Thank you, uh, Dashen Professor Fan. Uh, uh, it's my great honor that I uh, have a chance to, uh, uh, in this forum, uh, to uh, speak some of my personal experience uh, since I returned to Taiwan uh, 20 years ago. And uh, this is really, uh, uh, this, uh, I think, is a turning point not just in Taiwan, but also 
whole, whole world that uh, we are facing in the higher education. And I really appreciate that uh, uh, Da Xian has uh, great patience on higher education. Uh, actually, this is just one of them. He has organized voluntarily many different kinds of the uh, foreign. Uh, actually, this is the uh, very important in the current world. Uh, since we are facing so many challenges, you see the uh, the pandemic uh, right now over three thousand million people uh, was uh, affected by this uh, terrible uh, pandemic and over five million people die uh, because of it and this is also uh put a lot of this uh challenge on the higher education uh, right now that uh, uh different part of the world have a different uh, kind of uh, this uh, situation uh, many part of the world actually uh, a lot of students they cannot go to classroom uh, a lot of them are sick a lot of them cannot get enough vaccine or uh, medical attention. And many of them university or many country allow, allow, allow they can use in the internet to do the uh, education. But also people also question what is the quality of this online education? So this is this is all challenge to our higher education. And also we see the, the new technology rising, like uh, artificial intelligence, like uh, robotics, like cloud computing, IoT, 3D printing, quantum computing. And right now we have this AR, VR, metaverse. Uh, everybody know Facebook changed his name to uh, Verse, and the Microsoft just spent seven six billion to buy. Uh, actually, it's the meta. It's a game playing company. Actually, it's a meta metaverse. So this is a new trend uh, for the high tech. So we have to think how. We're going to educate our next generation of students how to face in this impact of new technology and also how to use this new technology to help to facilitate our education. And also we have a new generation of students, so-called Z generation students. They are digital native. They probably don't know much about our history. They are on the cyberspace all the time. We all know the chaos in the internet uh, world. There's no role there. They may be a bad influence for them. They may have a different character from last generation so facing those problems, how we can develop new pedagogies and curriculum to address this issue. Since the advanced technology, actually everywhere is short of engineering. We are scarred lack of the talent Consider the example of Taiwan. Everybody know semiconductor uh, industry in Taiwan is doing pretty well. And they continue building this factory. And they suck all the engineering, affect other industry. That's a reality in Taiwan. 
and I'm sure other country have similar kind of problem. Also, low birth rate is a real issue in Taiwan, also in many other countries, particularly in Asia, uh, like in Japan, uh, like <laughs> in uh, many in China, Korea, or even in Singapore. So how we address those issues, no student, then what's the purpose of university? And also there's a government issue and we need the money to run the university, the finance, and also the government regulation. Uh, different country have different kind of regulation. In Taiwan, uh, we are highly regulated, highly regulated. Everything we have to get approval from uh, this uh, uh, Minister of Education. So in Taiwan, it's highly uh, regulated. So all those are challenges facing uh, the university in Taiwan and maybe our part of the world. And then let's see the uh, experience that we have at ancient university from a sugar cane field to a university. Oh, that's before going to there. That's uh, going to the next one. The birth rate problem in Taiwan. Now it's 2021. 20, uh, the freshman population in Taiwan this year is less than 200,000. And the biggest, biggest challenge is in 2028, we only have about 160,000 college students in the vocation school. So this is really a, a big challenge to us. Uh, no student, and we have, as everybody know, we have uh, over 160 university. So they how going to survive without student? And we're going to talk about our experience with those uh, uh, challenge issue. Uh, how university uh, was founded in 2001. Actually, we started with a uh, prepared university in year 2000. I was uh, returned from US. Uh, I have uh, been teaching in, in the university over uh, 20 years. Actually, it's about 25 years. So, so when I returned from US to Taiwan, as Professor Fan Dashen, my friend, no. It's quite different. The university system in US and Taiwan is quite different. So we had to adjust the local uh, culture. And uh, at the beginning of the university, we had to build the, uh, the system, uh, recruit the faculty, set up the curriculum. Uh, even before that, we had to find a land and the uh, beauty uh, campus. I'm sure the Dashen and Professor Leo have experience in the University of Macau. Oh, the very fast, I think a beauty about 99 building, I believe in, I don't know, two years, three years. Oh, it's a fast growing university uh, as I know. But here we also have the same, same problem. Yeah. So uh, you can see in 2000 is a uh, sugar land field, okay? And right now you can see uh, all the, uh, the building, uh, the, the college we have, the quite a contract compared to uh, the year 2000. And uh, this is one of the most beautiful campuses in Taiwan too. We like to have a, uh, uh, this uh, a good environment for uh, students learning for faculty research. So that's the way to adapt this kind of uh, uh, this uh, uh, Norman uh, the Greek style building. 
and talk about uh, university education uh, uh, from our uh, this uh, <coughs> ancient uh, China, this Li uh, Ji Da Xie. We know the Da Xie is Dao Zai Ming Ming De, Zai Qin Min, Zai Zhe Yi Zhu San. The great learning in the book write the way of great learning consists in making one's bright virtue brilliant, consists in loving the people, and consists in re residing in public goodness. The German philosopher Karl Jesper, the true university has to have three attributes, academic teaching, scientific research, and a creative cultural life. The card Kerr, the first chancellor of UC Berkeley, say, a large modern university or multi university had to operate as part of a society. No longer as an ivory tower apart from it. What do we do in university had to be relevant, re relevant to the society. We had to contribute to society. We had to make impact to the society. And also the Cardinal John Henry Newman said, the education is about character formation. Here, so we have to uh, Asian mercy, uh, get a wisdom from all those uh, great people. We are very emphasized on moral education. We have three virtual education morality, refinement, and good taste. We honor citizenship, sex ethics campaign, sort of food culture campaign, green responsibility project. We also very emphasize on aesthetic education. We have a museum of modern art designed by Prisco Award winner, Tedo Ando. About more than 100 artwork uh, by the Grand Master on campus, include like Dodan, Henry Moore, Arman, and Yang Yang Hong. In the past eight years, we have 22 exhibitions, such as Zhao Wuji, Yosh Yoshitoma Narwa, Yoyoi Kusama. And we all also have the service learning program, we promote volunteer service education, organize the volunteer bank to encourage, encourage students to do service locally and globally as a volunteer. So 84 credit hour volunteer service course are required for Asia University students. This graduate, graduation requirement so in 2011 to 2015, we have uh, over 70,000 students participate in this uh, volunteer service. And we are now, Lena is uh, artificial intelligence uh, age. The education strategy at the Asian University is that we want to train students that the uh, capability that you won't be uh, replaced by AI. Uh, like uh, we have aesthetic moral education, exemplary learning, core discipline for creativity, innovation, entrepreneurship, maker spirit, and also the spirit of human care and empathy. Those are not something that AI can replace. But at the same time, we established the courage of artificial intelligence. So a student can receive this professional training in artificial intelligence courage. But also, we adapt the model of Carnegie Mellon University, they have a conversation courage, and they have uh, this uh, uh, intercourage program uh, with our, our courage. So that's the model we adapt here. We have courage, artificial intelligence, uh, and a cross 
intra-college curriculum with our other college, like medical and health science, like uh, management, humanity, social science, creative design, nursing, and also computer programming course are required in general education. We we'll adapt the comput computational thinking, most design thinking, flip classroom, project-based learning in our teaching. And over year, actually our students are doing a good uh, job, uh, receive over 42 prizes in AI competition in Taiwan during the past two years. We also uh, developed a smart campus uh, using a 5G smart sensor. We developed a lot of AI application, the smart teaching, smart environmental and energy management, license prayer recognition, smart medicine, administration, library, uh, smart life, and smart breeding. Uh, so all campus right now, we're using uh, this uh, AI technology. To support research, we also create many research center, like an AI research center, we cooperate with Kyoto University, Edinburgh Center for Precision Health Research, <clears throat> working with the University of Missouri, China Medical University, High Performance, High Performance Material Institute for HT printing, uh, work with Georgia Tech, actually with the National mm -hmm. uh, uh, University, uh, NUS, National University of Singapore, and also Nanyang Likong Technology. Big Data Risk Center, Center for Biotech and Blockchain, Institute of Innovation and Circular Economy, Center for Prevention and Treatment of Internet Addiction, Intelligent assistive, assistive Technology and Rehabilitation Innovation Center, Research Center for Edible and Medicinal Mushroom. And all faculty students receive like a National Innovation Award over the past uh, three years, the 12 National Innovation Award. All students, uh, in eight consecutive year, received this uh, like a German red dot IF Japan G mark. We rank number one and all all in, in the higher education uh, general university in Taiwan. <clears throat> we also have a lot of this partner university in many part of the world. Run with Sam MOE with 344 university in 34 country. And even we have the uh, MOU with the older university, University of Bologna is an older university. Uh, many old, uh, uh, we all know many old university originated from uh, Europe, uh, many in Italy, uh, in uh, UK, Spain. Uh, we are MOU with some of them. And we also establish an international advisory board. Oh, Bureau actually, we establish international Taiwan Education Center in Sarabaya. So this is the, uh, the center uh, sponsored by Minister of Education and operate by Asia University and China Medical University. So we have a lot of great relation with the university in Indonesia. Indonesia is the youngest in terms of population over 2,000 million population, the youngest uh, country in terms of uh, the population, the age in, 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 in the whole world. So it's a, a country has a great potential. So we luckily we have a lot of this uh, uh, interaction with the university in Indonesia. And we also established the International Advisory Board. Since we are a very young university, 
our experience actually is uh, a lot of is uh, local. So we need uh, this uh, uh, international this uh, expert who has uh, uh, international experience in higher education uh, bring in their experience, their idea uh, to help us to build, uh, to pro our vision, to uh, have more this uh, uh, interaction, more program in terms of uh, mm -hmm. teaching, student learning, research, international activity. Uh, we are very grateful great for that. Those uh, uh, outstanding individuals, they are agreed to serve on the board. Uh, like uh, Dr. Bertie Anderson, uh, a renowned biochemistry. Uh, he was a chairman of the Nobel Committee for Chemistry in 1996 and a former uh, president of Nenkopin University in Sweden and also Nanyang Technology University in Singapore. Dr. Ruth Arlong, a world-renowned biologist. She was a president of Israel Academy and also vice president of Weizmann Institute of Science in Israel. Dr. Aaron Bo uh, Boston, a uh, world-renowned applied mathematician and member of the Distinguished French Academy of Science, and also my girlfriend, uh, Dr. Fong Da Xian, a world-renowned theoretical physics and also the Federal American Physical Society. Uh, he was a chair professor uh, and also the uh, surf as the uh, program director, U.S. National Science Foundation, and former vice president of the University of Texas, uh, Dallas, and Dr. Navi, the former president of Techni, and also the current uh, president of National University of Singapore, uh, Dr. Tan. And here we also uh, bring uh, the special, uh, this uh, uh, education program here is a Nobel Laureate Foreign, uh, we have at Asia University. Over the year, we have a 17 Nobel Prize winner have uh, this uh, forum at Asia University. Uh, our student, our student actually learn a lot how their attitude, how uh, they pursue the knowledge, how to, uh, uh, the, their journey. Uh, some of them, they probably uh, the, they are come from poor family. I think those are a good inspiration to our students. And many of them actually, when they visit Taiwan, uh, they all mention the most exciting part of their trip is the interactive with the student. The most, uh, so they are, although they are uh, in their field, uh, they are, they are uh, uh, a great accomplishment but also they care about education. Uh, they all expressed to me that this is the uh, most exciting part of their uh, trip in Taiwan. We also have the museum. Uh, uh, we bring this uh, direct from this uh, well-known university like Harvard, Stanford, Oxford, Cambridge, Tokyo, Peking, museum director uh, symposium uh, our museum actually is a platform, open uh, platform that we invite uh, the artist or educator, educator or museum director and with our local educator and also the uh, artist, they have, you know, uh, interact to uh, maybe generate a new idea uh, to maybe can produce a good more uh, result. And as you can see that uh, AI is applied to many area, uh, particularly in medical, it's more mature. And right now it's, you can see uh, more, have more successful uh, result. So here we also do a lot of medical AI uh, research. Uh, in a hospital, we have a center for big data, AI center for medical diagnosis, 
Center for Medical Intelligence, Center for Smart Medical Science, Technology Innovation, Center for Precision Medicine. Uh, we try to apply to uh, some of the AI uh, medical uh, area, such as a virtual assistant, medical image processing, uh, natural language processing, audio pattern recognition, assistant medical care, disease risk prediction, drug mining, health management, hospital management, and so on. And this is what we are hiding. Uh, the sustainable, sus sustainable development goal, SDG S, uh, that's uh, uh, set up by the United Nations, uh, address a lot of this uh, emerging issue uh, facing uh, the world. At Asia University, uh, we have uh, also have some USR project like uh, internet addiction. Uh, she said, right now, we, a lot, a young people, uh, not, just, not just young people, a lot of people have uh, this uh, internet addiction. So we have program, we have center, try to prevent this internet addiction, also have treatment. Uh, this is probably only center in Taiwan. Also, we have other interaction with uh, many universities, like Harvard, like Kyoto, many other universities. And also the aging, the population with dementia, dementia, uh, dementia problem. Uh, so we have innovation and integrated care for dementia prevention at local community. We also using the AI to uh, help enhance the fish farming project, <clears throat> smart emerging strategy and telemedicine in remote rural area, smart architectural quality and brand certification platform using AI and blockchain, bridging the AI literacy gap between the uh -huh. urban and rural elementary and high school, quality architecture with smart technology, and so on. So we also involved in the Operation Taichung INGO Park. And right now, uh, I think uh, the most important is the uh, climate change. So uh, we actually uh, signed the United Nations 2050 Declaration on Net Zero Carbon Emission. In the university, we also established the Sustainable Development Promotion Committee and Promotion Always, and also joined Taiwan Institute of Sustainable Energy and also joined the STAR, Sustainability Tracking Assessment and Rating System. Our net zero carbon emission, uh, actually this uh, carbon emission came from could be behavior and we have to preserve the nature, how to use the technology to reduce these uh, carbon emission. So, uh, when I talked to Professor Huen, he, he asked me, what's the big change of the impact of COVID-19? Actually, I think it's the digital transformation. Uh, right now, like what we're doing using the internet, we have the digital hospital, digital finance. Uh, so this is a big impact. It's a digitalization transformation and AI transformation. And right now we are entering the stage of the carbon-free transformation. So our net zero methodology includes a strategy for integration, value chain effort, operation reduction, and remaining uh, emission uh, strategy. And over the year, uh, we have some uh, recognition from uh, some ranking system. So this is some of the ranking just for your imagination. So uh, world challenge right now, uh, actually, as you mentioned, the current change. I think uh, in Group Taiwan, many countries didn't realize how serious it will be. As Bill Gates said, right now the uh, the COVID-19, we have uh, over 
five, five, million, five million people dead. But the climate change will cause more dam damage to our human uh, society. Uh, so uh, uh, many people actually did not realize how serious it is. So I think this is one of the biggest challenges we have. The disease, uh, like pandemic, the water problem, the energy crisis, the population, pollution, property, uh, conflict of war, you can see in, 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 in <clears throat> Europe, in many parts of the world, natural disaster, aging society, and so on. I want to show you a video of what we do student do in Africa uh, as a conclusion. So just a very short video. The Amitofo Care Center in Africa is about 12,000 kilometers far away from Taiwan. There are a lot of kids who are lake of caring. Some of them come from disadvantaged family, some of them come from single parent family, and some of them even lost their parents. But they still try their best to fight for the fate and never give up. In July 2017, 11 students <clears throat> came from different departments with different majors of the Creative Leadership Society of Asia University, led by Director Professor Chunwei Ling and Professor Yan Nagash, traveled far away to serve the Amitofo Care Centers in Lesotho and Swaziland. Under the OPRO's project, the Overseas Professional Social Service Project to implement the advanced project-based learning methodology, an innovative learning method developed in Asia University. Through team discussions and activities, they stimulate the children's creative thinking, confidence, and self-learning skills. Cindy She, a sophomore of fashion design department, taught the kids to use local newspapers to design their own dresses and held a fashion show for these children. Jasmine Lin, a freshman of psychology department, designed a psychological board game to teach these children how to share their feelings and relieve their emotions. Grace Lai, a junior of leisure and recreation management department designed a Be My Guide activity to inspire their interest in tourism. Carol Lee, a sophomore of accounting and information department, created a popcorn production and marketing strategy game for the students. Of course, the fun part was to eat up all the popcorn at the end of the game. Tony Chen, freshman of healthcare administration department, designed a hand-on course to let the students understand the fundamental knowledge of daily life hygiene. He also taught the student an easy way to make water filters. <clears throat> During this amazing month, with the enthusiastic hearts the students uncovered the colorful part of these two distant countries. With the grateful mind and sincere love, the students show the children the hopes of lives and the opportunity to overturn their future. At the end of this one month long journey, what we really have accomplished for these black Pearl children is using a PBL learning methodology of our OPRO's project to deliver the seed of bliss from the other end of the world, the Asia University, 
Taiwan. Okay, thank you.